Remember Ferguson, Missouri last year, August? How can we forget? Riots, looting, burning, screams of hands up, don't shoot, and racism. And how unfair it was a white cop shot and killed the young, unarmed black Michael Brown. We all know his name. It's emblazoned in our minds as an icon of civil unrest and divisiveness. CNN had reporters on the ground there for weeks. Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson got more airtime from this one event than they'd had in years. Fast forward to Charleston, South Carolina. A deranged white man walked calmly among the Bible study class at Emanuel AME Church and coldly murdered nine black parishioners. Can anyone name those victims? Or how about the five young Amish girls gunned down in cold blood by a wacko in Pennsylvania back in 2006? Anybody remember their names? Why is the Ferguson, and for that matter the Baltimore incident, so vivid and divisive and the other two seem quieter and more rational? One word. Forgiveness. In the case of the Amish community near Lancaster, Pennsylvania, people from that church went immediately to the wife of the murderer to console her. And in Charleston, the teaching of Emanuel AME Church simply dictated that Dylan Roof and his family deserved consolation and forgiveness. Now, while the tragedies could not and cannot be ignored nor diminished, and forgiveness is not designed to excuse these behaviors, a retaliation emotion serves no humanitarian cause. What was done was done. Staying angry and inciting communities to riot and destroy themselves served no purpose. Perhaps the Charleston folks had seen the aftermath in Ferguson. Perhaps they were just prone to forgive. When I scratched myself badly as a child, my grandfather, the doctor, taught me not to mess with the scratch. Put some antibiotic on it and let it heal. Scratching and otherwise trying to soothe it by manipulating it only served to extend that, stretch out that healing time. So it seems the same thing in these horrific occurrences. Forgiveness is the antibiotic, and time without agitation speeds the healing. Emotional recovery began immediately in Lancaster and Charleston. Ferguson still looks like Berlin in 1945. CNN still talks about it, and it's been almost a year. That wound is not healing. If a father can forgive the man who murdered his daughter, her name was Naomi Ebersol, by the way, and a daughter can forgive the man who gunned down her 70-year-old mother, Ethel Lance, what is there that I cannot possibly forgive? It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.